the recording is in progress. I have to, I have to believe that's true. <laughs> We're going to believe it's true. And so good evening, everyone. My name is Lawrence Jay. I'm the director here at Rolling Ridge, and we welcome you to our latest series in our Divine Friendships series as we're looking and exploring the Christian contemplative classics. Today, we are going to be looking at the soul's journey unto God, or also translate the mind's journey unto God, um, written by St. Bonaventure. Um, the words Mentis is what is found in the original Latin, and there are some translators that battle in terms of whether it should be translated mind or whether it's translated soul. Our presenter today, Alan Dillingham, is going to be looking at a translation that translated the mind. So it's the mind's journey unto God. But for those of you who don't know anything about St. Bonaventure, St. Bonaventure was um, the official biographer, or actually one of the official biographers of St. Francis. He actually never really, quote unquote, met Francis, but he came right on the tail ends of Francis's legacy, and so was able to talk firsthand with many of those who followed after um, Francis and wanted to live into the charism and the example of Francis's spirituality. For those of you who might know Francis, you know that Francis was oftentimes seen as a freewheeling spiritual uh, uh, person who simply lived fully into the presence of God and recognized the kinship of the kinship of Christ with everyone and everything. Francis was not a theologian. He simply lived his life before God, and it was others who followed after him, like St. Bonaventure, who tried to, quote unquote, theolo theologize, to try to understand, to try to put some frameworks under to, to help people live into the spirituality that Francis um, embodied. And so the soul's journey or the mind's journey into God was St. Bonaventure's way of helping people to understand how to live into that Francis's, Franciscan journey. The biography that, uh, that Bonaventure wrote in many ways parallels the mind's journey unto God, and I'm sure that Alan Dillingham will probably allude to that a little bit today. But if you're interested in learning more about Francis, um, um, Bonaventure's writing on the soul's journey, the mind's journey unto God, is a wonderful way to understand the spirituality of Francis and the heart of Franciscan spirituality today. Yes, the text is a little dense, um, but Alan's going to help make it understandable and make it alive for our contemporary world today. And so without further ado, I hand it over to Alan, who will be leading our time this evening. And so blessings to you, Alan, as you get us started for the, on this journey. Hey, thank you, Lawrence. Uh, well, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, the uh, mind's journey to God or the journey of the mind to God is, uh, is a short work, um, but it's very, uh, it's very rich. Um, and rather than get lost into all the wonderful detail, um, I'm going, I'm going to sort of pick out parts of it so we get a general idea of the overall structure uh, of the work. Uh, the book is divided, as I said, it's 40 pages, so it's, it's more like a long article than a book, um, but it is divided into a prologue and seven chapters. And the prologue begins with a prayer. Uh, the prayer is, uh, and you can follow along in the outline uh, if you like, uh, the prayer is to enlighten the eye of the mind, to guide it into the way of peace, which surpasses all understanding. So I'll say that again, because it really sets the framework for what Bonaventure is, is doing in this work to enlighten the eye of the mind, um, or could be translated as soul, to guide it into the way of peace, which surpasses all understanding. So the keys there are enlightenment. It's, it's, it's seeking enlightenment. It's a prayer for enlightenment, to enlighten the mind, uh, the, the, the thinking part, the intellect, uh, into peace. That's sort of the ultimate, the ultimate goal. And this peace is seen as union with God, uh, which surpasses all understanding. 
Uh, so what you have in the journey of the mind to God is a journey through six steps or stages. And then you get to a final step where you basically sort of abandon what you've done. You've, you've, you've relinquished the intellectual thinking part and you get to the union part. Uh, now, in chapter one, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're still in the prologue. Uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, Bonaventure's inspiration for writing the book. Uh, what he did is he went on a pilgrimage to Mount Alverno in Italy, which is the place where Francis received a vision of a six winged angel crucified coming down from heaven. And it was at the same time in the same event that Francis also received the wounds of Christ, the stigmata. So Bonaventure went to this place where Francis had had this experience and he went there to reflect on it and to guide his own journey. And he saw in, he interpreted the six wings of the angel to signify six progressive steps in illuminating the mind and journeying to peace. Uh, so he was there, he was reflecting, he said, ah, six, that must be a significant number. What does the six mean? Ah, it's these six stages uh, or these six steps. Uh, now, before getting into what the six steps are, uh, Bonaventure talks about what is needed for the journey. And the journey starts first with prayer. Although this is the journey of the mind to God, uh, it starts first with prayer, not as an intellectual exercise. And Bonaventure wrote, uh, wrote, quote, we cannot rise above ourselves unless a superior power raise us. So although what we have in the, the journey of the mind to God could be seen as a very intellectual approach, it starts before the intellect, it starts in prayer. Uh, then second, the journey moves to living a holy life. Uh, so before engaging in the mind, in the intellect, um, it's necessary to live a holy life. Uh, as Bonaventure puts it, uh, it does you little good to try to see God mirrored in creation if your own mirror is fouled. So he put an emphasis on living a good life, living a holy life, uh, that this was, this was part of the journey. The third step would be gazing at what he called the spectacles of truth that occur at each particular step of illumination. So that's the, the contemplative part, the gazing part. And then the fourth step is to rise to the next stage of illumination. So you go from, the idea is you go from one step to another, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth. And so thus the progression at each stage is pray, live, gaze, and rise. So you pray first, you live well, then you're ready to, then you're ready to gaze at what 
God is showing you or what you were seeing with the mind. And then you rise to the next step, next stage. Now, the first step, which is also discussed in chapter one, is seeing God reflected through all material things. In other words, seeing the visible world as a mirror, and as a mirror through which we may pass over to God. So sort of in sort of when we begin, we use our senses, we look out the world, and we see in the world a mirror through which we can see God and through which we can pass over to God. Now, this idea of Passover is very important. It's uh, Bonaventure later in the work connects it very specifically to the Jewish Passover. And this, I, this idea of journey can be thought of as passing over, uh, as a going through. Uh, so in the first step, the whole visible world is a mirror through which we pass over to God. Uh, the material universe is a ladder by which we may ascend to God. Now, the second step is seeing God in all material things. And this is the subject, this is the subject matter for chapter, uh, chapter two of the journey. Not only do we see God in the mirror of visible creation, we also see God in visible creation, acting in the things that we see through our senses. Uh, God is present in visible creation by his essence, his power, and his presence. So if the visible world did not have these things, they really wouldn't exist. And so we see them and we see God in them, not, not as a mirror, not simply as a mirror, but also seeing God in them. Uh, and so the first two steps are closely related and they deal with our gazing at the visible world, the external world, the world that is available to us, to our senses. That leads to the third step, which goes beyond simply what we see uh, from our senses, but also, but, in, but into our mind itself. So we see the external world, and then we reflect, the mind reflects on itself. And what does it see there? Uh, visible creation is a macrocosm, which is, it enters into our soul as a microcosm through our senses. And it is apprehended, enjoyed, and judged by the mind. So when the mind looks out, it, sim it doesn't simply see the things in the visible world. It processes them. It, uh, well, that's a, Bonaventure doesn't say process. That's, <laughs> that's my word. And, that, and that's kind of more, more, more modern word that maybe we could use. It, uh, It reflects on them, it thinks on them. Uh, the mind has three basic powers, memory, intelligence, and will. And in these three powers, we see the stamp of the Holy Trinity. Memory comes forth from intelligence as its offspring. 
just as the son comes from the father as its offspring. And from the memory and the intelligence is breathed forth love, which is an act of will as the bond of both. So in our very process of thinking, we see reflected God. We see reflected the Trinity. Now, as I said, we see this, but remember the process in each of these steps is pray, live, gaze, and rise. So although it's a rather intellectual approach and it's, and it's meant to be delivered to uh, theology students, this doesn't happen simply in the mind. It happens through God's grace as well and through our desire in, in, in the first part. Um, and that, that is true through all the stages. Uh, so from the third step of seeing God reflected in the mind in seeing the sort of this image of God, uh, this image of the, of the Trinity through uh, our mind, we go to the fourth step, which is seeing God active in the mind, seeing God in the mind. Now, we often don't see this, Bonaventure writes. Uh, completely immersed in things of sense, the soul cannot re enter into itself as the image of God. Uh, in other words, we don't see God in us because we're usually preoccupied by the senses, by our cares and worries and anxieties. Uh, in order to move beyond that, the image of the soul must be clothed with the three theological vir virtues of faith, hope, and love. By this, the soul is purified enlightened and perfected. And Bonaventure writes at this level of contemplation, the study of scripture is very helpful. The law of Moses purifies, the prophetic revelation enlightens, and the gospel doctrine, the evangelical doctrine perfects. So in this purifying, enlightening, and perfecting, we can see that God is in the mind. Uh, and Bonaventure writes, purified, enlightened, and perfected, we are inhabited by divine wisdom. We are, quote, made a spouse, a daughter, and a friend of God, a member, a sister, a co-heir of Christ, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. All this is accomplished by the most sincere love of Christ, without whom we cannot know the mysteries of God. So that's step four, seeing God in the mind, not simply, again, not simply reflected in the mind, but in the mind. Uh, and again, Bonaventure writes, scripture is helpful to doing this. This is not something that is easily seen or gazed on. Uh, that leads to the fifth step, which goes beyond the mind to the contemplation of God himself. Um, and in, in the fifth step, 
God is seen in being, in existence. In this stage, the mind goes from looking into itself to looking above itself to God, as I said. The soul gazes principally and primarily on being itself, declaring that the first name of God is he who is. Being itself is so absolutely certain that it cannot be thought not to be. So in contemplating existence and contemplating being, we're contemplating God in his Well, I want to say in his most basic form, but uh, but um, that doesn't quite get what I'm working at. So let me quote from Bonaventure, uh, who says, "Hence, this being is the universal, efficient, exemplary, and final cause." of all things. Things exist to the extent that they participate in being, in existence, in God. Uh, being is the cause, uh, the, the basis of understanding uh, and the norm for an orderly way of living. Being is holy within things and holy without them. In this fifth step, God is, is seen as the ground of being, the unmoved mover, the one, uh, the unity of God. So that's the fifth step. The sixth step is to see God as Trinity in the idea of the good and in Christ. And Bonaventure writes here that the good exists in such a way that it can be not be thought of unless it is thought of as triune and one. He writes, for God is said to be self-diffusive and therefore the highest good, I'm sorry, for good is said to be self-diffusive and therefore the highest good is most self-diffusive. So the good gives itself out. It gives itself away in a sense. Uh, and God diffuses himself not simply through the material world, but within himself, within God's self, within the Trinity. Uh, so God is this utter communicability. The perfect illumination, Bonaventure writes, is when our mind contemplates in Christ, the Son of God, the first and the last, the highest and the lowest, the circumference and the center, the Alpha and the Omega, the caused and the cause, the creator and the creature, the book written within and without. And Bonaventure says that at this stage, at this step, the mind arrives at the perfection of its illumination. On the sixth step, just as God 
perfected creation in six days. Um, now nothing further remains for the mind but the day of rest. And thank goodness, because this is sort of some heavy lifting through these, through these six steps uh, as, as far as the, the gazing and the contemplation goes. And in chapter seven, Bonaventure writes, when the mind has done all this, it must still in beholding these things transcend and pass over not only this visible world, but even itself. So it's, trans, it's passed over the visible world, it's passed over its, uh, itself, and it also passes over its thinking about God. Uh, in this passing over, in this, in this rest, if it is to be perfect, all intellectual activities ought to be relinquished. So you've, got, you've gone through all of this thinking, in a sense, or this gazing and rising, and then gazing and rising and gazing and rising to a point where even that needs to be passed over. And Bonaventure writes, no one receives this, uh, this passing over except him who desires it, and no one desires it except he who is penetrated to the marrow by the fire of the Holy Spirit. So again, we don't, we don't do this all on our own. Grace plays a big role. We use our mind and the mind makes a journey, but the, in a sense, the journey itself is passed over. Uh, and Bonaventure concludes by writing, let us then die and enter into this darkness let us silence all our cares, our desires, and our imaginings. With Christ crucified, let us pass out of this world to the Father. And that is, as I said, sort of an outline for the... Uh, for the work, there is much more that Bonaventure has to say in there. Um, but I think this is quite a lot to absorb. And I think at this point, um, I'll take questions and then we'll pause for a while for reflection, uh, for silence, and then move to uh, a discussion. Uh, about how you might have been moved by this exposition uh, on Bonaventure. So first off, let me let me take any questions you might have, and I'll do the best I can to answer them. <laughs> would you tell me the century? Mm -hmm. uh, the thirteenth century, which would have been the twelve hundreds. Thank you. Uh, and he spent, uh, uh, until he was 40, he was a um, professor of theology at the University of Paris. Um, and when he became 40, he became the seventh successor to St. Francis in, in leading uh, the Franciscans. And it was on that occasion that he, that he went, uh, to Mount Alverno, do this pilgrimage to where Francis had been, and from that came the journey of the mind to God. And in writing it, it's not, 
he's not giving a personal account of a journey like you might find in other places. He's basically saying, okay, these are the stages of the journey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sandy. Okay, I'll ask another one. Sure. Um, what do you think he meant by a holy life? There's a lot of perf words perfect in there many times. and Because I haven't led a holy life if it means perfect and good. And that makes me disconnect from him. So I'm wondering, what did he mean by a holy life? Uh, that's... That's really challenging. I found I find myself challenged in the same way. He doesn't really go into it a lot. Um, he does he does say that he does say that when he makes this pilgrimage that he's a sinner and he's looking for peace. And so this peace comes first in praying for this peace. And then in trying to live this peace. And if one is to live peace, in a sense, one has to live perfectly, but we don't live perfectly. Um, so, um, you know, I don't, uh, I, I, you know, I would say do the best you can and you'll get farther along. Um, but he wants he, he wants to stress this because he he doesn't want this all just to be a thinking exercise you know that you can't just sort of think your way to god it's you need to live your way to god too and in living your way to god you'll be able to see you'll be able to gaze if you're not living your way to God, you're going to have difficulty seeing. So it's not just the mind detached from the rest of your life. It's not just figuring out God. It's actually moving to relationship with God that you can then, in a sense, do this pleasurable activity of contemplating uh, God with the mind. You know, although it's a hard, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a hard pleasure. It's, it's a pleasure like you get from working out, uh, you know, working out your muscles. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Joey? Yeah, um, <clears throat> just wondering, I guess I'm having a bit of a hard time sort of under, understanding the, 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 the word uh, mirror, how it's used here in uh, between the first and the second step, you know, seeing God reflected through all material and seeing God in all material. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I guess I'm not seeing a mirror. I'm, if I'm seeing through, I'm seeing more of a window than a mirror. So I'm just wondering if you could maybe help me with that. Like, what are your thoughts around that and I guess that particular the mirror versus a window and then secondly seeing through and in maybe just drawing a distinction there please well I think I think the idea of a window would more being seeing God in created things but before you see God in created things you see God reflected in created things, like a mirror. Can, yeah, can you, yeah, I'm sort of having a hard time differentiating. Can you say more about that, please? Uh, okay. 
Um, uh, okay, this is my best take on it because uh, you know I, I I understand that I understand the difficulties and I'm and I'm trying to explain Bonaventure. So forgive me if I. Uh, no problem. <laughs> if it doesn't come through clearly. Um, but before we see God in things, we see his reflection. So we don't see God in a sense face to face when we look at creation, at least not at first. We see him reflected. We look at the created world and we say, wow, there's something behind this created world. So behind uh, might be a way of thinking it, uh, that God is behind created things, but he's also in created things in the sense that they exist. Now, the thing is with God, when you're thinking about God, the, you know, we break it down to understand it. This is the, the, the journey of the mind to God, but God in terms of his existence is reflection and the mirror. You know, we talk of the image of God and of God. Hmm. You know, so, so this is Bonaventure's idea about how the mind progresses, how the mind makes its journey how the mind passes over from one step to the next. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I, I'm not sure he's completely right about the steps, but there is a, there is a logic and a pattern to it. Uh, think of the six steps as three pairs of two. The first two is seeing God in creation. The second is seeing God in the mind. And the third is seeing God beyond the mind. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Hi. So I'm wondering if you can like, so I'm, I'm kind of like, like tripped up a little bit in stage four mm -hmm. or the fourth step. Mm -hmm. And so how do you recognize God active in the mind? It says that it's often, yeah. often we don't well, see it. Your, so, yeah. so how do we know? Think of, uh, well, I, Bonaventure would say we know through Christ that in seeing Christ, we see this original image that we can't see on our own. It's like we can't, we can't see it. It's difficult to see on our own, but if we look at Christ, we can, in a sense, see what we were created to be, what we are, what we, what we are originally. Uh, and Bonaventure talks about um, Christ uh, restoring the first ladder that had been broken by Adam. So that original connection between God and, and, and man, between God and humanity, uh, is what he's talking about here. And in seeing it, we really see it through Christ. And scripture is 
helpful in that. It's an aid in that. Um, but uh, that's that's where we would be able to see God in the mind, according to Bonaventure, or according according to my particular reading of Bonaventure. So, so, so I, so I get that to look towards Christ to be able to see the, the image and find our way towards right. Mm -hmm. I mean, my words, right? Not mm -hmm. necessarily Bonaventures, but does Bonaventure give anything like to like how to really know, like? I um mm. there's a you know in our in our culture and our, our our media and all the you know I I just watched 60 minutes last night and there's these like um I don't know these like fake things that can can come at us they're mm. they're like they just through the computers and stuff like that they just like impose a character yeah. on people's faces. I don't know if anybody watched 60 yeah. Minutes last night, but it's like really amazing how like like nothing is really true. It's all it's all false. It doesn't even exist. But through me th through um, technology, it can be created. So, like I, I think about like our modern times and stuff like that. So, how does Bonaventure? How do you how do you know? I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. even even Christ can be false. We, you know, scripture tells us that, you know, there, there can be people in the deserts or whatever that are saying, you know, here he is. And so how do you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Um, I would um, extrapolating a little from Bonaventure. I would say that you go back to the stages in the process, which is pray, live, and gaze. So in order to gaze, in order to see properly, and in a sense to know, it's, it's not something that we really do. It's something that's given by grace. And and it's hard to communicate that. So Bonaventure himself writes, you know, do not, well, let's see if I can find it. He, he talks about the incomprehensible. And, you know, he, he goes through this and he says, now don't think that the incomprehensible is comprehensible. So one has to rely in a sense on faith. And, but it's a faith that comes again from this praying and living well, or trying to live well, you know, I mean, we're sinners, so we need, so we need help to be perfect. Uh, you know, our prayer is imperfect. We need help to pray. Uh, likewise, we need help. We need God's help to gaze to see these things truly. And if you, and if you don't, you know, I, I would say sort of stepping out back from Bonaventure a bit is that if you don't buy into it, you don't buy into it, you know, and that this is not, the, the journey of the mind to God is not meant for, it's not meant as apologetics for unbelievers. It's meant as a guide to those who are followers or want to follow. So, um, you know, that's that, you know, I don't know that's a very, if that's a very satisfying answer, but I think that's the, I think that's, that's the case, you know, you can sort of take them or leave them uh, <laughs> or, you know, or, you know, if, or trust in God or not, you know, and 
Uh, yeah. So, so my understanding is that it's just really a deep knowing, deep in your faith, and using all the tools that Bonaventure has presented. You know, to mm -hmm. to to dig deeper into that, but it's really just like this really deep knowing that doesn't always necessarily have clarity, but it, but it does because it's part of the mirror and, and part of the. Well, remember too, that the, the, the final stage in all of this is resting in Christ. It's peace. So it's not necessarily a type of intellectual clarity. Basically he says, you get that through the six steps, but then you have to go beyond even that. So it's that deep knowing, that sense of peace that um, yeah. surpasses all understanding. Exactly, yes. Okay. That, that, gotcha. that prayer that he makes at the beginning to guide the eyes of our mind into the way of peace that, pa that surpasses all understanding. So you use, use our understanding to get to a place where we can get to a piece that surpasses understanding. Uh, and in a sense, uh, in a sense doing, doing, going through the six steps is like climbing the mountain. And once you've climbed the mountain, then God has to come down from the mountain to encounter God. You just, a God is not like a destination that you just get to. It's like you do all that you can to get there. And then once you get there, then you have the rest period, the Sabbath, the, uh, the resting in, in the crucified Christ. Joy. Yeah, can you just, I just want to say that, uh, I just want to make sure I understand what you just said. So you said about the mountain. <clears throat> so the six steps of the mountain, climbing to the top of the mountain. And then you said two things. One about God coming down the mountain. I just want to clarify that bit. Mm -hmm. And then also the rest. So you're saying God coming to meet you at the top of the mountain? Yes. I mean, okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. So really the destination is, well, it's the journey but it's also then the rest, the destination. Is that fair to say? There's that seventh step, that rest step, that Sabbath step, that in a sense is the end of the journey and is beyond the journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, in, in some, in, when, when you get to that, uh, well, I want to, call it the seventh step but that isn't really what it is it's beyond steps mm -hmm. um once you get there you really aren't journeying anymore mm -hmm. Mm. now would this be one of those things that is i mean speaking of you know sort of this life and the afterlife is that seven or sorry is that place of rest is that something that is are we talking about these steps that are we have these like you know james finley talks about you know these fleeting fleeting mm -hmm. moments within this life or are we speaking where the landing pad the the rest is actually now you've is that something in this life can it be experienced in this life or is it in the afterlife or is it both? Uh, I think ultimately it has to be beyond this life. You know, it, 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 it can be in this life, but only complete beyond this life. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say after life. I would say beyond life. I, 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 and this is just me 
trying to interpret Bonaventure is, mm -hmm. is that I think, you know, we, you know, we, we do get, I think, glimpses of this rest. I mean, in order for Bonaventure to describe it while alive, he must have had some inkling of it. Right. But he also has a sense that in its fullness, it goes beyond life. Sure. That's fair. Thank you. Thanks uh, for the microphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Glenda. So when when you so just going off of everything that was just said, so so when you're when you're saying that God comes down the mountain to meet meet, or I, I'm interpreting it as meeting. Is mm -hmm. that is that like at that point, is that like a re, a union with with God? And that brings the peace. Mm -hmm. Think of it, think of it as Moses, think of it as Moses going up Mount Sinai yep. Yep. to receive the law. And it's it's that type of metaphor, that type of analogy. Yeah, but he wasn't very peaceful when he got to the bottom. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, then he had to go back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that and that um I I think you can. Uh, so is it is it always a going, you know, going up? Well, I always picture it as a going up, going down, going. You know, we 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 mm -hmm. can't stay on the mountain. We have to go back down into the valley and go back up. Does Bonaventure think of it that way as well? Um, I would agree with that, but I don't think Bonaventure puts it that way. Okay. I, you know, I don't think that I don't think that's that's Bonaventure. Okay. Um, I think I think that for for you and I, for all of us, it's what we it's what we do in our lives. Uh, but um, he's really looking at, and I think, in an ultimate sense, an ultimate passing over. Uh, but what is it pass over, and you're passing over? You're passing over through Christ to the Father. So, you know, I mean, that, um, you know, I don't think, like I said, I don't think Bonaventure would put it in terms of going back into the, into the valley. But, um, you know, I think that if you if you look at Christ and the one who's sent from uh, from God, he definitely seems to have gone into the valley, but he goes to take you back out of the valley. You know, it's it's where uh, it's where create cre creature creator and creature are joined. You know, that's. Bonaventure writes about that. Why don't we take about two or three minutes to just pause and reflect and let me offer, uh, you know, let me open it up for you all to offer your own reactions. Um, you know, rather than rather than me answering questions, let's open it up and and discuss how we were moved. So I don't have a bell, but I'm looking at my little timer. So we'll give it about three minutes.
Okay, and if you're ready, uh, this is the sound of the bell um, calling us out of our brief contemplation. And um, I'd like to open it up to your reactions. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, just, I'll say this, you know, when I think of, you know, the different mystics, uh, how would I say this? I, I would say there's a tendency in me to, okay, here's the steps. Um, where, where am I on this journey, you know? to use it as a comparison or, uh, or that kind of thing. And I realize that as I reflect on this and you know, say other writings, other contemplations, that I mean, you could be in and out of a number of these steps you know, in a different order. Um, and I suppose, I think I read somewhere recently about You know, these are, I guess, for me, the encouragement is this is a, it's a reminder that having it laid out this way is almost more of a, an encouragement along the, the, the journey, along the path to say, this is real or this is true, whatever, you, whatever it is that I might be experiencing at any given moment. Oh, right. Okay. I can trust this. Okay. I think that was a word that James Finley used. I've been listening to a little bit of um, turning to the mystics. And um, that was a real encouragement for me as somebody who receives spiritual direction, who's also in spiritual direction training right now. And I think of that whenever I'm connecting with my spiritual director, with others, is there's this, aren't we always just sort of reminding each other of, of the truth? And so to me, I guess that's what I receive from this is, oh, this is, I don't need to worry about where I might be on this or try to figure out where I am at but it can be helpful at times, particularly in times of, let's say discouragement, like, oh, I can trust this. I can trust where I'm at. I can trust what's, what it is that I'm experiencing or not experiencing. And I guess I'll just sum it up by saying that, you know, when I go back to the beginning of this, it's almost like the only thing I really have to offer out of my life is this desire. And I think that's something that I, to me, I'm, I'm more interested in that or the desire for the desire if it's absence, if it's absent. So I, I guess that's, I kind of, I guess what I'm trying to say is this kind of takes me into my mind and, and coming back to that place of desire and open-handedness takes me more into my heart and into that desire for union that I've experienced um, in fleeting moments but I kind of hold on to that desire and to that love, I guess, of, to, at the risk of being reductionist. For me, that place of desire and rest is the peace that passes understanding that if that's all I have is my yearning, that's a wonderful thing. I can, I can live with that and not know any of the rest. If I was to make Sandra's theology, <laughs> I like Bonaventure, but I would make it a game of shoots and ladders. Mm. going up the mountain because mm. I meet God most when I'm at the shoot shot right down to the bottom again repentance reconciliation that's where and maybe that's what he means about living we live we try to do these very ideal acts of unbounded love I, unbounded isn't the word i want but um compassion that is unconditional 
And um, the more I try it, that sometimes the more I go down a shoot. So yeah, I'd make it shoots and ladders. And I love the living thing, but I think the living is often in my recognizing that I'm human and the courage to throw the dice again and move forward in the game. But I loved your question. How do I pronounce your name? Singlead? Singlead? You're on mute. Yeah, Siglindy. Siglindy. It's a beautiful name. Thank you. Um, I loved your question. How do you know? Because I often say to myself, oh, I've just totally brainwashed myself <laughs> to faith and hope and all that. But what a good way to be brainwashed. And, and if I'm honest, I have to say that I'm gradually going up the mountain, even though I go down shoots, I'm growing in compassion. Um, um, my behavior improves almost so much that I don't notice it, but um, yeah, there is some growth. Oh, why bother? And yet I find most of the growth happens at the bottom. Thank you, Joey, and thank you, Sandra, for your reflections on this because it, they were really, um, they helped me and to be able to articulate my own. And so, um, so Sandra, I love your shoots and ladders. I, I, I love it. It makes it so contemporary for me and helps me to really like dig into it a little bit deeper. So I really appreciate that. And, um, and, and Joey, I really love the desire because that also helps me to like dig into it a little bit deeper for me. Um, so, th so thank you. Thank you for, you know, the way you, you described the desire and the, the open-endedness to it because then it makes me go back to um, Sandra I think it's something that you said and this is just like my own process in the in in the midst of this is um, you know going back to the to the living and being able to like really, you know, go up the mountain and down the mountain and up the mountain and down the mountain. Because I think that that's, every time we do that, we get to be able to gaze a little bit deeper. And it's our desire to keep going up the mountain to be able to get that gaze a little bit clearer until we like get it. I mean, that's just my, you know, until we can like rise to, you know, whatever, whatever that is. And I, and I love the, you know, that that's, that's one place that I know that I'm, I'm in the zone, I'm in the right place when you have that peace beyond understanding. You know, you, you just know, it's just this deep knowing that you just know that you're right where you're supposed to be, you know, and it doesn't, you know, I wish it could be 24 seven, but it's not. <laughs> Cause you have to keep going up the mountain and down the mountain and, and learning and gazing. So you know, Alan, what here. you said and what yeah. Bonaventure says to you know get to the other get to the other side it is a passing through and um but i think we spend our whole lifetimes trying to get there i mean for me so far i've spent my lifetime trying to get there so alan thank you because i haven't really um you know since seminary 
really gotten in and gotten to dig into Bonaventure again. You know, it's like, you know, it's one of those things you had to do in seminary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but I haven't revisited it really. So thank you for offering this and in, in in um helping me work through some of it. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. Um I um this was this was my first encounter with Bonaventure. So uh, and I spent a lot of time with him because I was just and I don't think I've I by any stretch of the imagination have him sorted out or figured out. Um, but he's um, he's he's definitely, I think, um, orienting his approach to people who think too much. <laughs> and I count myself as one of those. Uh, and so, you know, going through the six stages, you know, my head sorts of hurts. And if, and if you go deeper into this stuff, when he, he brings a lot of different stuff in much more than I did. And I think he's trying to show some folks who've, who are, are perhaps um over educated how to go through this you know you contrast this with something like the cloud of unknowing and it's very simple you know there's the cloud of unknowing you can't know god you got to put everything else in the cloud of forgetting and then you just bang against the cloud of unknowing for help you know that's that's kind of the the and, and you know the Bonaventure, I think, is sort of taking the scenic route or the long way home. Um, and for people who think too much like me, it's like it, somebody, sh it, it kind of shows you, it, it sort of gets you to a place where you stop thinking. It's like, okay, yes, you're gazing and you're reflecting and you're journeying with your mind seeing God in things and in your mind and, and beyond your mind, that's all to get you to a place where, in a sense, you stop the thinking and you abandon yourself uh, to God in Christ. Um, We have about eight more minutes. If anybody has um, some further reflection, I don't mean to shut it down early. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we haven't, we certainly haven't exhausted <laughs> Bonaventure. Alan, I'm glad that you uh, just said what you said because I mean, I tend to overthink and I feel like I've been, I'm being drawn into a place, well, certainly over the last number of years here a place that's, you know, more, you know, from the heart and, and, and out of, from the mind into the heart. Mm -hmm. And um, so interestingly enough, I mean, Bonaventure had me at the very beginning when I realized I didn't really want to go on his journey because, because it, it was like, it was too, too much mind for me. And that mm -hmm. all, it instantly brought me to the desire. And I thought, Oh, Oh, that's all I need actually and so i you know i just sort of you know in the process of going through cloud of unknowing again i'm like yeah that, that's really all it is and so interestingly enough it's like um yeah but by going through this it's made me realize that i don't really want to take that scenic through through the mind i, I i'm actually kind of content to to learn to live more from here and so um yeah, I guess I'm just encouraged by the, the multitude of ways that God tries to get my attention to get out of my head and just stick with my heart. And so right off the bat, I was like, oh, just desire. That's it. I, I don't, this is too heady for me. So, so yeah, so thank you for saying that. That's, that's really helpful, actually. Yeah, it, it's heady stuff, but his point ultimately is, is that you pass over it. 
you know, and I think uh, not every not every believer goes through this path. Um, but um, you know, but but some do for the people for the people who think too much. <laughs> you know, you uh, and you know, as I said, he's he's getting you to a point where it's where it's beyond mm -hmm. the thinking. Yeah, appreciate that. You know, and it's certainly, you know, I mean, Francis wasn't Francis of Assisi, Bonaventure's model, you know, wasn't didn't go through this journey of the mind. You know, this is Bonaventure trying to bring Francis in. This is Bonaventure trying to bring Francis into the academic world of the 13th century, which had a lot of, you know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of heady people, sharp minds, you know, including Thomas Aquinas at the University of Paris. So. That's why I asked you the century, because mm -hmm. um, I have a vague memory of reading a book about Augustine, in which mm -hmm. there was a diagram of the his mind and the mm -hmm. arrows going to God and everything. And I'm like, ah, this sounds like Augustine to me. Yes, but, uh, yes, uh, he does. He he does. Um, well, Augustine Augustine was such an influential figure to everyone after that um that um and it was it was augustine who who sort of thought okay it was augustine who in his confession says i looked for god in the world but the world said he isn't here you know and um you know bonaventure sort of uh definitely takes uh, takes Augustine as a point of departure. I always say it wrong. Oh, Augustine, Augustine. Oh. I, my Episcopalian friends correct me on my pronunciation all the time. I like that you mentioned creature and creator mm -hmm. and that he wrote about that because to me, that's a big part of um, letting go of how smart I am and finding my right place mm. in, in it with God as opposed to with the world. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that recently we read somewhere in all these leveling things that like the highest level may be for me to say, I am who I am, but uh, uh, I think those are God's, that's who God is. I love what St. Paul says, I am what I am. Mm -hmm. And that that's a big part for me of finding the peace and the, um, letting go of all the intellectual and certainty just to recognize that I am loved, I'm a creature. And it helps me to love others better. Thank you. Thank you, we've got a couple more minutes if, ever, if anyone has any uh, anything they'd like to add in here. We, um, otherwise, I, I wish we had Lawrence here for the blessing, um, <laughs> since he's actually ordained. Um, but um, I'll I'll try to give an impromptu blessing and and send you all off into the night. Um, dear Lord, we thank you for uh, bringing us together. We thank you for the gift of Saint Bonaventure and Saint Francis. Uh, and uh, the gift of the journey of the mind to God. Uh, 
thank you for our companionship and thank you for blessing our discussion and uh, grant us uh, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Yeah. Thanks for your time, yeah. Alan. Thank you. Thank nice you, to meet Alan. everyone. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Alan. Thank it you, was everybody. so nice to be here. Nice to be here with all of you. And and Joey, it sounds like you're on um, this venture of spiritual direction. So blessings on that as well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice to meet Grace, everyone. Grace and peace. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Sandy. Bye -bye. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Joey. Yeah, thank you. Good night.